welcome to John Bo Catfishing. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I wanted to make this video because yesterday I worked on my boat and I added four new rod holders to the boat. Two of them is for down rigging, two of them is for running planer boards out the sides. Um, I did this because my last two fishing trips I was fishing anchored in High Rock Lake and I just couldn't even get a bite. Uh, the, the, the water was 43 degrees and the fish are just not moving. There was hardly any current, you know, I don't even think they had the dam open. Um, it just wasn't that great of fishing compared back in the fall. So I figured that the water is just cold and I need to start dragging baits to get the bait in front of them since they're not moving around. So I'm going to do uh, walk around around the boat and explain how my boat is set up for catfishing. Explain, you know, uh, the reason I got it set up like this for dragging, and basically just give you a rundown of how a 1448 boat can be turned into a, a catfishing boat that can haul in, you know the fish with the, the biggest, nicest boats out there. Let me get in, into it. Uh, if you guys like what you see here, make sure to like and subscribe to the video. I'll be coming out with uh, more videos as I fish my way around the High Rock Lake and up and down uh, the yakking channels. Let me just do a walk around around the boat, and if you guys like like what you see, make sure you subscribe. Uh, let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna start this walk around from the back of the boat. I'm gonna go over the motors, and I'm gonna go over my my rod rack and my the rod holders that's in it. I got Atwood rod holders on there. Uh, I got a bilge pump in here in the back. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the whole back of the boat, and we'll just move our way forward. As you can see, I got a, a, a six horse Evan Rood on here. Uh, this is a real good motor. This is a 1976 model motor. It's the same year that I was born. Uh, this motor, on a nice calm day on the lake, this boat, this motor would get this boat going maybe 10 to 12 miles an hour. Uh, it's a it's a real good running motor. Evan Rude makes makes damn good motors back in the day. I mean, I, I haven't seen any of the new ones, but I haven't used any of the new ones, I should say. But the older motors made by Evan Rude are, I mean, you can't you can't you can't kill them hardly. Um, then as far as a trolling motor, I'm just using a basic Minkota. This is a 30 pound thrust. Uh, five-speed Minn Kota, just standard stiller handle. Um, I mean, this this motor works real good for uh, dragging baits and drifting, keeping the boat straight during drifting. Uh, it's a this is a real good uh, motor for this size boat. Uh, I don't know if I said this boat's a 14 foot by 48 inch wide. The floor on the base is uh, 48 inches wide, so I mean this is not a very big boat. I installed a, a bilge pump over there to get the water out of the boat. Like I said, this is a small boat, so if it starts raining, you know this boat can fill up pretty quick. As far as a fish finder, I'm running a Garmin Striker 4 Plus. This is just your standard fish finder with the graph on it I mean that's basically uh, I basically just use it for for the a depth finder anyways I mean I, I haven't I, I don't really I mean it's good for finding bait and stuff but I, I mean I haven't really had any luck as far as finding you know big fish with it usually when I see something big it's usually a, a bunch of damn shad as far as as far as the the rod rack itself, I built this out of just all aluminum that I bought from from Lowe's. Uh, it cost me like 50 bucks to build. I mean, this thing's like a tank, though. I mean, it, it's strong. And then I got 
you know, I topped it off with the five Atwood adjustable rod holders. These things can be took out and that way you don't lose them going down the road. You can adjust them, you know, however. Got an adjustment knob here. You can, you know, adjust them up and down. They're, they're, they're pretty good uh, rod holders. I mean, I've, I've caught some big fish on them and they, they hold up pretty good. As far as put my side mounts, my Atwoods on the sides, my lights on the sides, I just used a piece of the angle iron scrap off the off my top rail there to mount the light and the side rod holders. The rod holders I put in here yesterday are, as you can see here, these, I put two on the sides. It's got an angle on them for, be good for for down rigging while dragging or drifting. And then I put two on the sides here with about a 45 degree angle. That way I can use these to run my farthest planer boards that I'm gonna be running. Cause I'm gonna be running a four planer board system. Two planing boards out of these two and then two out of these. And then I'm gonna have this one going straight down from the boat and then I'm going to have this one and that one going straight down from the back of the boat. Maybe on an angle like this or something. Pointing that way up underneath this pole. And way I can keep these three poles spread out far apart. Because this boat, like I said, it's not very wide. So when you get a bunch of lines going out the back of the boat, they tend to get tangled up pretty easy. But I'm thinking now that I've that I've uh, added these other rod holders now I'm thinking when I'm dragging these baits they're gonna the fish are gonna be on them I'm planning on taking and adding two more rod holders right here somehow coming out so I can have two more poles going down I just haven't figured it out how I'm gonna do it yet um, I'm, I'm trying to keep everything right here around the seat that way I have access from this seat here that way I don't have to get up and you know I only have to move to the back of the boat because the front of this boat being uh, being a flat bottom it doesn't have the v-hull front end on it being flat like that when you get up here in the front of this boat and you're standing up here in the, in the front of this boat it's kind of it's kind of unstable it's not it's not the stablest boat when you're standing in front I, all the action has got to happen out of the back of it i mean as far as throwing a cast net i built this i built this uh flooring up here the original seat was about this size so i added all this and uh this is where i had the old seat i had this seat up here but i took it off of here and put it there i'm gonna take this off right now right now i'm just using it for a temporary camera hole holder my my camera holder slides down in that hole right there perfect so it holds my camera all right let's get to the live well the live well is all homemade um it's just a bunch of scrap pieces from the job that i've you know that i've saved up and i've built it i've just used it to build this uh, it's got a shoreline marina five amp uh, pump on it which comes from Walmart this is a 800 GPH pump and my village pump back there that's a 600 GPH pump so I mean it's not this pump is a little bit more strong more powerful this thing uh, this thing a pump uh, I think 3028 gallons an hour or something it says right here I don't know exactly how many gallons it pumps but I know it works real good um, this uh, as far as the inside it ain't nothing but a, a tote that I cut down and I framed this box in right here secured the tote here with that with the strip here and then I then I I just rigged this up you see down here it's got a all that that's a filter off of a paint sprayer that I put on there it helps keep some of the some of the fish shit from going up in there you got to clean that every so often flush the water out I uh, in order to you can turn this this knob on here and this is in a draw water from there 
and pump it out of here so it circulates the water. So if you turn, if you leave this one, if you turn this one off and turn this one on, it pumps the water out of the side of the. All right, and then as you see, the pipe comes out the side of the boat here. Then if you want to fill it back up, you you turn this knob here to shut the water from pumping in there and you turn this one on right here and this one is pumping water straight out of the lake so once you've once you've cycled your water your old water out like I, I do that maybe I do this maybe every two hours while I got fish in here I'll, I'll sw switch the water out and then once it fills up I usually fill it up you know to about right here a little bit about two inches higher than that pipe and then uh, once it fills up, you just turn this knob and turn this knob and make sure this knob's open and it's going it's to spray out of there and start circulating again. This thing, this, this, this live well right here will hold maybe two 40 pounders uh, in here uh, uncomfortably, but they'll stay alive in a tournament i mean that's my main reason for getting this boat going and putting this live well in here so i could fish some of these smaller tournaments you know they uh these some of these tournaments they ain't letting you string or net any any of your catch you got to have a live well in your in your boat so i got one now as far as my batteries are concerned i got it's a two battery system this battery over here is my better battery i run my village pump my live well and all my lights off of this battery and then that battery over there is running my trolling motor which that battery right there lasts me all day uh just turning that motor off and on keeping the boat straight while while dragging or drifting i usually use wind uh for drifting and uh you know i'll throw out a, a drift sock or something to slow the boat down if it's drifting too too uh, fast I, I just i just use the trolling motor basically to keep the boat straight on path of, of where i'm going you know i use the navionics app and i i get the the contour of the bottom and i just follow the contours and uh that's basically all that trolling motor does. It, it doesn't do a whole bunch of work. So in a day's work, that battery right there is plenty big enough. Uh, when I do upgrade, I'm probably going to get another one of these batteries. These are damn good batteries. As far as anchoring the boat, this is an anchor that I made right here. I uh, actually seen this on YouTube too. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the the video on making these uh this is a damn good anchor man this this thing holds me down in the yakin river at four or five mile an hour current you know this is a this is a real good anchor that it's only it's probably 15 pounds it's just basically just filled with concrete and some rebar and a chain you know it's pretty simple i think it cost me 20 bucks to build this anchor as far as the anchor in the back of the boat this is just a little anchor that I got. If the water's too rough, I usually just throw a couple bricks and slide a couple bricks down the line, you know, and I, I throw this out the back over there, tie it off over there, and this just keeps the back of the boat from swinging around when I'm anchored. As far as the lighting, I, I know this is ugly. I got a, I still, like I said, I'm not, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna build a, a, a small console right here that has my switches and everything inside. Then I can move my garment fish finder and put it right here so it's in front of me when I'm driving. And I'll have a fuse box built in here. I just got all these wires just put in here for now. Just to, just I just wanted to see, you know, it's basically a test run on these lights. It's a bunch of old wire and then I had and I just, that's why it's got so much tape on it, is I just taped it together to uh, get the lights set up where I want them and see how they look. I mean, as far as the lighting, here's the running lights right here. It works off this switch. 
I've got four lights up there on the pole rack. And we'll walk around here in the front. And I got the green and red uh, navigation light here in the front. It's a muddy mess, man. Um, then the next set of lights is our is our floodlights. They're uh, these things really shine the, the river up in the at nighttime. You can see pretty much. You can see the whole bank with these lights on the sides, and then the ones in the front. You got to have that for the logs. And then I got these light, green lighting strips on the back. On, I mean, on the sides of the boats for bait at nighttime. These things work great. The, the water line on the boat's probably about right here, so they shine down in the water and attract the bait. I'm planning on putting a, a green strip across the back back here to help light the rods at night. But as far as, and then I'm gonna put, you know, two strips on the inside here uh, to light the feeding of the boat here. Oh, it's another thing I wanted to say is you can see where I cut out the old bench seat in order to get the live well to fit in there and then I had to install a fire extinguisher of course. And then I got plenty of storage here. And that's where I put the life jackets and all the stuff that I want out of the way of the boat. Uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's a 1448 John boat. Um, I mean, the total boat, I probably got about 1200 into it. Um, it's a damn good boat for catfishing. With all that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. See more of my upcoming videos. Uh, like I said, I'm getting ready to do a video on dragging. I'm gonna actually going to use what I did here, the John boat, and some dragging weights that I made off of the video, which will be in the description how to make those. Uh, it's a real good video on making those dragging weights, and uh, it's not my idea. It's somebody else's. Like I said, I got it from a video. The same thing with the anchor. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put both of those down in the description for you. And uh, just stay tuned for some of these catfishing videos. I, I'm, I'm new to this this uh, this YouTubing. I see that everybody else is doing it, and I decided to get into it. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I made this video for the the boat because I wanted to test out the camera so if you guys leave some comments let me know what you think about it and uh, make sure you like it and subscribe and stay tuned for my next video see you later